Okay, welcome to this PHP tutorial uh, for the basic section. Um, in this video we're going to talk very, mm, I keep saying very briefly, we're probably going to talk for 15 minutes about arrays. Um, arrays in PHP are one of the sort of core data types like a string or an integer um, and basically they can store sort of um, like more than one value if that makes any sense at all. Um, I'll just get on with some examples and sort of talk about array manipulation and how to define them. Um, and then hopefully it'll sort of explain itself and I won't have to ramble on making no sense. Okay, uh, just quickly say uh, we have this arrays.php file. I also have it open in my browser here. At the moment you just see that it does absolutely nothing. Uh, my window's not lined up quite. There we go. Um, yeah, as you see at the moment it does absolutely nothing. Um, we're just going to do some sort of quick examples. There's not going to be any sort of HTML or anything in this video. Okay, so let's define a new variable. Let's just call it uh, names. I want to make that equal to an array. This array sort of function, it's not really a function, it's a language construct, but it works similar to a function. Um, it will take an unlimited number, pr number of parameters and it will return an array. So let's just give it. Let's just add some users like Bob, uh, Carl, and me. Um, so this will create an, a new array with three elements. <coughs> uh, each of those elements will have the value. Like the first element will have the value Bob, Carl, and then myself. Um, the array keys, which is sort of um, okay. Think of an array as sort of a list of key and value pairs. So each key will sort of be linked to a value, it'll point to a value. So this will create an array of <coughs> um, three three elements, uh, three keys and three values. Because we haven't specified the key, um, they just get, uh, they use numbers so starting from zero and counting up. So zero will be linked to Bob, one to Carl, and two to me. So you can see that if I use the print underscore r function uh, on the users array, what the print underscore r function does is um, sort of print out the array in a format that's easy to read. So it'll make sense to like a, p a person. <laughs> if that makes any sense. If I just hit reload, you see we have an error because I've made a sh oh yeah <laughs> names. Stupid mistake. You see we get this um, information, we get the fact that it's an array, we get the key pointing to this value, and then a list of the like a list of the keys and their values. So this is one element, this is the second element, and this is the third element. Um, an array can have an un unlimited number of keys and values, obviously. Um, you can use any data type in PHP as a value and um any string or number as the key which points to that value. Um, you can specify the keys by doing um, something like this. If I just say this, oh, actually no, let's do key. Um, you use this sort of whatever this is called, I usually say sort of pointing to, so this key is pointing to this value. If I now go, now go back to our uh, browser, just hit reload, Nothing has changed. Why has nothing changed? I didn't save the file. <laughs> okay. Now, if I hit reload, you see um, that where we previously had zero, we get key, and where we previously had one and two, we get zero and one, because we haven't specified a value for the, the other two, a key for the other two. Um, so PHP is starting from zero there and incrementing by one for each sort of subsequent um, element in the array. Uh, so yeah, that's sort of how keys and values work. Um, when you're defining a sort of long list of um, elements, so I prefer I like to use this syntax, sort of to bring each element onto a new line. So say you could do key two, points to there, key three, points to here, and then we would just oops, bring that there, and like that, like so. So if I just reload the page now. You see, we get um, the same output as before, except key two and key three are now where it was previously key zero and key one. So now we're specifying the keys as well as the um, values for each element in the array. 
Um, you can also um, produce this same output by um, using the square brackets syntax of like a, sort of like what you would with a normal variable. Um, so say if you made an empty array, just using the array function with no parameters, if I now just read it out of this page, we see we get just an empty array with no no elements in it. Um, so you, you can specify a value by doing names and then the key in square brackets, so we had like key one, and then equal to the value, so Bob. If I now go, now go back and reload this, you see we get key one pointing to Bob, one element in the array. Um, you can also sort of leave out the key like so, just empty square brackets after the variable, and then PHP will automatically generate a key, style as it did when we used the array function without specifying the keys. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for arrays. Um, you can so you can sort of nest them if that makes any sense at all. So say if we had the names, actually no, say we had users and then that was an array and inside this array we had the username as the key so Bob and that was pointing to a new array and that array had the um, first name wait no uh, yeah first name first name uh, Bob last name um, like so. Oh, one thing I should just quickly point out: uh, the array function um, takes a comma-separated list of values, and you can, um, like, well, I'll just demonstrate with a sort of simpler example. Say you had one, two. You can leave. Oh, well, you can leave this final comma here, and PHP will just sort of ignore it. Um, so yeah, that final comma will do nothing. You can also have it without the comma to make it look more like a normal function. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. Uh, so we can add more users, like say Carl, to a new array. Oops. Yep. So first name to Carl and last name is equal to um, Smith imaginative so now if I uh, change this to users and reload our page you see we, well I shall just view the page source this print underscore r function outputs it outputs this directly with new lines um, but because we're viewing the page as HTML uh, new lines are ignored so what's um, what we've got here is an array with two arrays inside it. So you see the same output as we had before. Um, so this is what was output before. Um, so for a single array, um, and now we have it as a multi-dimensional array. These are called sort of multi-level array. Uh, you can think of it like that. So yeah, that's how they work. Um, uses of them. Well, I can't really think of an example at the moment, but they tend to come up. So when you're doing sort of processing of things, okay, uh, let's say, for example, you wanted to make a function that generated a random password. Uh, you could do this by, um, you see, PHP has loads, so many array functions that um, manipulating them becomes very easy once you know of these functions anyway. So say you wanted to make a, um, a randomly generated string. Let's just define a string as like a char, a character set. I'm gonna call it chars, um, and we could have this just as this. Um, so yeah, uh, say we wanted to pick out sort of a random selection of these characters. We could do it using a loop, a for loop, and the substring function. What we could also do is use the array rand function to um, pick out like a given number of random keys from an array. What we would obviously first need to do is um, convert this into an array because at the moment it's just a string. Um, we can do that like so chars equals str split chars. And what the string split function does is it takes every character from the string and puts it into an array. So say uh, now we do print underscore r chars, go back to our page, see we get 
each character that I typed in that string as the element in an array with an automatically generated number. Um, and then we're going to use the array rand function. Uh, so let's just say um, random random chars equals array rand. The, ar the first parameter is the array we were giving it, which was chars. Second one is the number of characters we want, so let's just say five. And then if I uh, print underscore r random chars, just hit reload on this page. You see, this is generated in another array. It, uh, the array rand function returns an array um, with randomly selected um, keys from the array, which in this case isn't massively useful because we'd have to loop over each of these keys and get the value. But another thing we can do is use the array flip function, which basically swaps all keys and values. So all values become keys and all keys become values. Uh, so, well, I'll just demonstrate that. If I go back here, uh, let's just comment that out briefly. If I do print underscore r chars, <laughs> chars, uh, remember from before we had um, the list of characters in the values section. If we do print underscore r array flip uh, and reload that, we'll get each character in the key part of the um, element. Um, so now if we do, uh, well, remove that line and do array flip here and then print, uh, print underscore r the random chars. So remember this is picking random keys and returning them as an array uh, and this these keys are these each of these letters. So we, we basically we define we make a string of characters we want to use for our password, random password. Uh, we split it into an array, so each character is now the value in an array with the auto incrementing key. Then we flip that array, so now chars is equal to um, an array of naught to how many characters there were, with each key as a character. And then we pick out a random set of five characters, um, the random keys which are the characters. So if I just out, uh, run this script now, hit reload, you see we get um, va uh, random values. So if I just keep reloading it, we see we keep getting random letters. So hopefully this is making sense so far. I don't feel like I'm explaining it brilliantly, but um, I'm not sure how else I can say it. It's quite a simple concept, so I imagine if you just play around with it, it'll make sense. Um, obviously the final thing we had to do, we would have to do here, is let's just define this pass variable as implode. What implode does is similar to explode, except the sort of the other way. So it'll take a string, it'll, no, it'll take a string and an array, and it'll return the entire array. Well, no, it'll return the um, it'll return a it'll return a string um, of like each element in the array with the string between it. So say if I give this, give the, give it the string of that and the um, array of random chars random if I now reload this page I didn't output it let's also just echo pass like so if I reload this page now you see we get um, sort of a list of random characters separated separated by this vertical bar character that I specified for the implode function uh, but if we just specify, we don't want that obviously, because we want a completely random password. So we can just specify an empty string, which then just generates a length 5 string, which is random from this string, or this array. So, yeah, that's one potential use of the array sort of manipulation, and a little example of how you can well, make a random password function if you want to, or um, well, and you know, anything. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for arrays. And yeah, I've almost talked for 50, 15 whole minutes. So thanks for sticking with it if you got this far. And hopefully I have explained things a little bit better.